Sometimes I get asked questions about the suspension on this Forerunner, and so I thought, why not give the people a video with some answers? So in this video, I'm going to do a comprehensive list of all the parts on this thing, uh, where to source them, how much they cost, and what's all on here. Let's go. The front end of this Forerunner sits five inches higher than stock. And when I say five inches, this red Solo cup is exactly five inches. So the top of this fender used to be at the bottom of this cup at factory. The rear end sits four and three quarter inches higher than factory. So it's a little higher on the front just to get rid of that kind of factory rake that you see. These are 285 70R 17s. Essentially, it's a 33 inch tire and they're sitting on an inch and a quarter wheel spacer from Spider Tracks off road out of Colorado. So, why have wheel spacers, you ask? Well, in very basic terms, once you go to this bigger tire, you run the risk of the tire rubbing on your frame rail or your suspension links when you're at a full turn. So, these are the spacers, guys. They're the WHS. 007k spacers from spider tracks again these are all aluminum they're double anodized which hopefully helps with corrosion and they just basically bolt on exactly like a wheel does now i know that you can actually get these on amazon they're about 120 130 bucks so i'll put that link below and i'll also put a link to spider tracks now let's get to the meat and potatoes here the first thing you notice is these lovely teal springs they're from dobinson's spring and suspension out of florida c59302 and they'll run you about 300 bucks for the pair don't worry about writing any of this down i'll put it all in the description inside these lovely teal springs we have the dobinson's front struts they are part number ims59 50574 extended travel struts and they are about 280 bucks a pop and in the rear end here we have the dobinson ims 59 5575 56 millimeter rear shocks it's worth noting these shocks here they can be uh, revalved and they're rebuildable okay you guys i got my fat ass under here with the camera now because i want to show you guys something in the back here and i don't know if you can see the very top above the bumper there that black ring let me just zoom in a bit here see if i can get you there there we go pardon the shake right up there that's an old man emu 10 mil spacer and i've got that on the rear passenger side of the vehicle and that's just to uh, level it out and of course the springs are in beautiful teal you really saw a wolf no i saw wolf tracks guys i hate doing this because i never ever do it because I think it's stupid, but I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. I make this high quality content. I told my kid I'd buy him a basketball if I got to 50,000 subs. But I just kind of want my channel to grow, but it's not growing unless I ask people to subscribe, I guess. So we'll see what happens this time. I'm asking you to help me out. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get back to lift getting. And why would I not put black on and put teal on instead? Because you guys, it's my wife's car. Not that teal is a girl color. I wouldn't ever say that. I actually like teal too. So teal is a rad color. Teal's for everybody, not just boys or girls. Okay, people, as we come back to the front of the vehicle, we have one more big ticket item and that's these adjustable upper, adjustable upper control arms from SPC, Specialty Products Company, out of Colorado, I believe. Now, when you lift a vehicle like this, obviously you're gonna mess with the uh, camber and caster, basically your alignment, which you have to have dialed in. These ship with a couple of degrees of caster in them already, and because they're adjustable, you can go ahead and get that wheel alignment dialed in just right. Believe it or not, you can buy these on Amazon. They're not cheap, they're about 700 bucks for the pair as i take a little break here to enjoy this um relatively warm japanese ale 
I'm just going to be straight up with you and say that I do have a front differential drop kit in here. It's a Canadian product. It's from a company called Green Lane. It's essentially like a couple bolts and a couple spacers. But I don't really want to talk about it too much because there's a million nerds online who fight about it. So go on some forums if you want to hear people talk about the necessity of a front diff drop. What it does come with is some spacers that lower the skid plate which leads me to my next piece of kit and the final piece of kit, which is probably the most important of this whole lift. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here. This spacer, this is from Treaty Oaks Off-Road out of Houston, Texas, I believe. So this Forerunner has the KDSS system, which stands for Kinetic Dynamic something something. But what it does is it, at, this is hard linked right here. So when you, Putting this spacer in brings this sway bar, the rear sway bar goes across here and it brings the sway bar back to the factory angle. So then you don't get that KDSS lean. Otherwise, this bar is going to be up. I don't know how many inches this is, but it's quite a bit of space. And when this pulls up, that's going to give you your lean. So these spacers from Treaty Oak, they're 200 bucks, they're aluminum, and they are worth every penny. But not only that, seeing as we now have little spacers dropping the skid plate with that unnecessary diff drop kit, once you put the spacers in your front sway bar, now the sway bar doesn't hit the skid plate. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is we did do a little bit of a tuck and a trim on this front fender here, just basically from here up to here, uh, just in case there's any rubbing from the tire. So after all of that, we're looking at about 2,500 US, maybe a little bit less. And I would argue that this Forerunner rides better now than it did from factory. But guys, I'm not a mechanic. I don't pretend to be a mechanic. Obviously, I don't have a hoist in my garage. I took this Forerunner to a shop to get all of that done. Uh, Crave Automotive, that's Crave with a K. They have a wicked Instagram feed actually. You should go check that out. And you should always consult with a licensed mechanic. But listen, if you've made it this far, wow. I'm gonna have to ask you one more time. No, I'm gonna beg you to subscribe to this channel so I can get this thing to grow. Uh, Junior needs a new basketball, so let's get him that new basketball. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let's go. Let's have a beer.